six new captains, five new season award, one new headliner, a new chase pack, a brand new program, a new mini seasons reward, and new rank seasons missions. This content drop is one of the best they have done since the day of the launch for the game, you know, way back in the second week of March or whenever it was. This is, I think it's honestly one of the best drops they've had in terms of content. Today's a great day. All right, we got, I got some beers in me and we got um, finally beautiful weather coming out here. I don't know where you guys live, but up here in the Northeast, it's finally starting to shape up day to day. And with all of that, we also get a great Friday content drop. And this is, like I said, finally one of the first ones that actually feels exciting. And like, I want to hop on the game right away and start playing. Uh, there's a lot to go through, man. I mean, we'll head to the shop first. And I, like I said, I always recommend just doing no money spent, not, re you know, buying it or whatever. Let's just go through the captains first because there's some really good ones in here. And if you got 40,000 stubs to spare, it's worth picking up one of these guys. I think, I think all these captains are really good. And while it is 40,000 stubs, you can get two of them if you want, if you got the stubs for it. I do. I don't know if I'm going to invest that much into it. 80,000 while I'm still trying to complete live series collection and not drop any money on the game. I don't know if two is worth it, but I know at least one of them probably will be worth it. And a lot of you have probably heard it by now by the social media posts and all that about the switch hitting captain. We'll get into that. The first one, though, is Trevor Hoffman. The card alone is actually pretty good considering the amount of bullpen cards we have right now is kind of limited. Um, in terms of good bullpen cards, you know, we have a lot of guys with three pitch mixes and it's Brian Abreu, Edwin Diaz. They did release that free Kendall Graveman through the conquest map. So that one's totally free. You can just earn it by playing conquest. And I finished it yesterday. Uh, you know, you do have to play about 14 or 15 CPU games, no matter what strongholds, you cannot skip through the strongholds, but after that you do get this Kendall Graveman card. Uh, I like it a lot. So you have 125 hits per nine. Great sign. Five pitches, another great sign. Those are two things I love to see in any pitching card. Um, arguably on par with that Edwin Diaz card that they did drop. Edwin Diaz might be a little bit better statistically, but I think with the five pitches over the three pitches, people might have a little more uh, fun pitching with this one. But, you know, that Diaz card does look good too. So you got the Conquest map there. And going back to the shop for those packs with the captains, I like I said, I recommend at least getting one. Trevor Hoffman... Two quirks. Captain boost at tier three is 15 hits per nine, 15K per nine, 10 pitching clutch, and 10 walks per nine. Eight pitchers that have reached 45 saves in a season on your squad. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone that might have eight pitchers already, unless you've been playing the game nonstop, that meet that tier three requirement. However, you could probably find, you could probably scratch together at least four pitchers for the tier one boost. That's five hits per nine, five K per nine. And like I said, the Trevor Harf Hoffman card itself is not bad. Uh, probably worth trying out. Maybe it sucks. The one they gave him last year kind of sucked. The one they gave him the year before that was awesome. He's off and on, hit or miss. Trevor Hoffman, that is. And at this point in the year, you kind of just have to try him to figure it out. All right, Clayton Kershaw, lefty captain. He is going to have... 101 stamina and 94 hits per nine and then 80k per nine is not great but 101 walks per nine with 84 control is good five pitches also good 86 velo not anything to write home about and five pitches like i said no quirks but the captain boosts are this 22 left-handed hitters and pitchers on your squad that's a lot that's a lot for a tier three boost maybe you can get there i think you could put together a good enough team by now where you have that many lefties. I think, what, you have 26 guys on a squad. The 10 hitters, including the DH, and you got four bench spots. It's 14, five pitchers, not, you know. it's got So it's got to be your whole team, I guess. That's got to be, no, almost your whole team. Almost your whole bullpen. You can have a couple bullpen pitchers and a couple rotation pitchers that are righties, righty hitters at least. Um, or you can go with tier two boost, which is 10 hits per nine, 10 contact versus right, 10 power versus right. 10 bad and clutch, and then tier three is plus five to all of those. Tier one is only 13 of those guys, which you can easily get. So that's not a bad option. Let's take a look at the next one. David Ortiz is going to be the 2000 hitter, 2000s uh, hitter captain. So only hitters, and you need 11 hitters for the tier three boost, which is 15 contact to the right, 10 contact against the left, and then 15 power against righties and 15 bad and clutch. Card itself. Pretty good for a 95 overall David Ortiz in terms of contact. 114 against righties, 96 against left. Powers 110 against righties, but only 75 against the lefties. 
Uh, kind of thought it would be a little bit more, but still not bad at max clutch. Can't beat that. Uh, 80 Vision's not bad for an Ortiz card, at least at 95 overall, I think. And um, yeah, see what he quirks he's got. Pretty much all the hitting ones you need. Dead Red, unfazed, fighter, situational hitter. Does he have pinch hitter? No, he doesn't. But he's got first pitch hitter, breaking ball hitter, and uh, some, some good ones here. So the quirks will definitely help him out uh, against good pitchers as well. Fielding, you know, first base is his only position and pretty bad at it, but it's first base in this game. It's it's doable with that. The next one we got is Mark Pryor. Never been a big Mark Pryor fan in this game. The cards he gets just don't really play out that well to me. And I think a lot of people would agree with that. I don't know. His attributes, there they are. I'm not going to go over them. Captain boost is 20K per nine, 15 hits per nine, 20 power versus righties, and 20 batting clutch. I do kind of like that they add it hitting attributes to pitching captains and then pitching attributes to hitting captains, vice versa, so that the captains are way more versatile this year. Make you want to use more captains instead of the ultimate, you know, switching or the short, shortstop captain we had last year, the Cal Ripken durability boost. It was pretty much just those two that you saw used heavily. And then towards the end of the year with theme teams, you know, some team captains and all that. But even the team captains this year have more versatility by adding boosts to pitching and hitting for the entire team. All right. Only nine standout series players on your squad to meet tier three, three of them to meet tier one, and it's 10K per nine, five hits per nine, and 10 power versus righties for that boost. Uh, I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> this is the one we're all excited for, and it's Carlos Santana. Pretty good catcher, and you can play him at first if you want. Switch hitter himself, and uh, he always gets a decent card every year, and he's pretty pretty easy to use. A lot of people have fun using this card, and the card itself right here looks pretty good too. Better against lefties with more pop and more contact, but 91 contact and 91 power against righties isn't bad either. You got 110 clutch, pretty good. Uh, yeah, catching, you know, 69 blocking skill and uh, nice. 81 arm, 75 accuracy, 79 reaction, not too, you know, 70 fielding. That's like a Jimmy Fox type build. Um, he'll be okay, catcher. Obviously not the best catcher in the game defensively, but, you know, it works. No quirks, unfortunate. The tier three boost is 13 switch hitters on your squad. And, you know, once everyone gets J-roll, I'm sure he'll get a great boost from this. Even though his contact is pretty good, you'd probably want a power boost when you have J-roll on there, but uh, you're not going to get it with this one. It's only 12 contact versus righties, 12 contact versus lefties, 10 batting clutch, and 10 walks per nine for this tier three boost. Not as cracked and, you know, insane as I thought it would be. This isn't going to blow anyone away, I think, when they look at this. Tier one boost is only five contact versus both sides. Tier two is eight contact versus both sides and then five batting clutch. Um, you know, a lot of people like switch hitting teams regardless of a boost. So I think a lot of people will probably use this and get tier three boosted but it's not as crazy as I thought it would be, and that might be a good thing for the game, just so we don't have to see this card, this captain boost the entire year. Uh, I think it's good what they did with this card. It's kind of like when you see a speed mile, or what do you call it, a speed limit sign, and it says something weird like 13 miles an hour, and they do that to really just catch your attention more than anything in like a school zone or a grocery store or parking lot or something. I feel like they kind of did that with the tier three boost here by giving it 12, or 12 contact, and those other tribute boosts, I don't know. Like I said, not crazy, but it's just a good card regardless, and everyone's going to have switch hitters on their team because they like them. So, personally, I'm not a guy who likes an entire switch hitting team. I just find that looking at that side of the plate the entire game, people, pitchers will figure you out how to pitch from the other side eventually throughout the game, but obviously switch hitters are better than not, so I like having a decent amount of them myself. Great card. Good captain boost. I think they balanced it really well. I'm, I bet there's some people out there who wish that it got boosted more. Seiya Suzuki, Asian-born captain. Now, <laughs> Kyle's going to like this one. This is a great card. Uh, you need seven players that fulfill boost requirement on your squad. Seven players that fulfill boost requirement. So they have to be born in Japan, China, anywhere that has an Asian, you know, continental-born Location and you can do tier one is actually not that bad. Three players would get you 10 power versus righties, 10 contact versus righties, 10 walks per nine, 10 hits per nine. Sorry, five hits per nine. Tier two is plus five to all those, right? And then tier three is almost plus 10 to all those. Yeah, plus 10 to the tier one. 20 power versus righties, 20 contact versus righties, 20 walks per nine, 
15 hits per nine to the wall, uh, the pitchers. Pretty good. I like that one a lot. So this boost includes <laughs> Lars Newbar and Tommy Edmond. I guess that was in case you were confused if Lars Newbar and Tommy Edwin were, uh, you know, Asian born or American. They probably just assume people got that confused. So it does, um, it does represent the boost does boost them because they represent an Asian national team, uh, in the world baseball classic. So, or other tournaments, I guess, but the only ones I know them from are the world baseball classic. They do represent Japan. So there you have it. Um, or at least Lars Newbar does. So the next one is, sorry, that's it. <laughs> okay. On to the season drops. We got Cal uh, Rayleigh and 96 overall looks pretty good. He's got a good swing. His stance is nothing crazy. His leg kick is nothing crazy, but he's got a sweet swing switch hitter. Really good catcher. I like the, uh, the defensive attributes on this card and uh 97 clutch low vision, more of a righty killer. It's a good card, but you got to get it in the pack. Reed Garrett. Everyone was hoping for this card. I'm glad he got one too. Uh, it's a five pitch mix, which is awesome. I really like his pitch mix as well. Even though the slurve and the slider, some people will think that's like just the same pitch, but you know, you can really throw people off if you use them correctly. Splitter. I like fastball sinker. It's awesome. And on the splitter itself, he's got 90. So it should work. It should do well. If you don't have a good splitter and the splitter is just kind of a nothing pitch, but this one should be good. I like this card, 125 K per nine and 116 hits per nine. That's amazing. 78 control with 70 walks per nine might be a little difficult to uh, spot and locate on higher difficulty, but he should play really well on, you know, all-star, which a lot of people are playing on right now because they're either not playing the game that much or, you know, they're still trying to figure out the game if they're new to it, but it, it would play well on all-star and hall of fame, I believe. And maybe, um, you know, with 96 velo and 95 break, it'll probably play well on legend too. So this is a great card. Next, we got Ranger Suarez, and I'm a big Ranger Suarez fan, but in MLB The Show, I just feel like his cards do not play all that well. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about Ranger. It's just a velo. He just doesn't have enough velo in this game. It's not slow enough to throw people off that much, and it's not fast enough to have an impact with velocity. It's just, just one of those pitchers who really great in real life, and it doesn't translate well to the game. Every time I use him, he kind of gets lit up. Every time I hit against him, it seems easy to, to, to pick up on his pitches. And that's just simply not true in real life when he's throwing these curveballs after these sinkers and fooling batters, but it's not translating to the game. So I, I would, you know, <laughs> if you get the packing, you have another pitcher available. I believe he's on the same tier. No, he's in the mid round or the base round. So there's only two rounds, base and rare. And if you get the base round, I would probably avoid getting Ranger if Mitchell Parker is better. And uh, you know what? Honestly, it doesn't look like he's that much better because he's got 66 velo and only four pitches. And Rangers attributes just look a tad bit better. Just a tad. You know, if you get the base round, you might want to look into getting uh, Jonathan. I don't know if it's class A, sort of like Emmanuel class A or a Clase. I'm just, dude, look, I'm sorry. I'm not, behind, I'm not up with the names right now, but if I knew how to pronounce it, I would be able to. But th that's the base round. But anyway, let's go to the headliner pack. We got Matt Chapman, Platinum Glove. I'll be honest, man. I knew Matt Chapman was a great fielder. I know he's won a lot of gold gloves. Didn't know he was a Platinum Glove at one point, um, especially with Nolan Arenado being in the league. But obviously, it's a different league because he got out with the Athletics, National League, American League, you know, two, two Platinum Gloves. All right. 101, 108 contact good. 100 power, 84 power. That's Matt Chapman build. Pretty standard. 97 overall, though. That's, that's, ex that's what you expect to see. 99 fielding, 95 arm, 90 accuracy, and 99 reaction is going to play really well at third base. That's the only position he can play. Uh, you can have him DH, but it wouldn't make sense because his fielding is probably one of the better, best fielding cards in the game right now. Next to Mike Cameron um, and maybe Nolan Arenado as well. But he's got one quirk. You know, I would just, just try to get lucky. Try to get a headliner pack from playing other game modes. I don't know if it's worth buying yet, but if you really want them... He might be pretty good in your lineup. Chase Peck, Jordan Alvarez. They've done it again, man. I I love Jordan's swing. He just does everything right. And uh, the fielding, you know, whatever. At this point in the year, everyone's got bad fielding. If you come across a good fielder who can also hit, you've struck gold. So, yeah, I wish the fielding was better, but Alvarez isn't a great fielder to begin with. So that's, that's honestly pretty fair ratings at 75 fielding and um, 78 reaction. All right. Not a lot of speed in the outfield either. That doesn't help at all. But 
that is completely overshadowed by his hitting in a good way because 115 contact, 125 power, 101 contact, and 92 power, respectively, is like, you know, with his swing, one of the best ones in the game. Um, 112 clutch, this card's awesome. I think this is the first chase pack reward that is deserving of actually being a chase pack reward. You know, that JD 91 overall card. It, nothing to sneeze, again, sneeze about for the first couple of weeks of the game, but then it quickly became nothing. All right, a lot of quirks too. Pretty much all the hidden quirks you, you want. Bad ball hitter, Red Dead, Rally Monkey, and um, yeah, he just doesn't have pinch hitter, but this is a great, great chase pack card. Let's see how much he's going for. Buy now is uh, around probably 200, 205, 205K. Let's go to the mini seasons real quick because I want to check it out. I'm going to be playing this one. I just personally enjoy pitching with Bob Feller for some reason in this game. I know he's got a long windup and people hate that and uh, it makes the game go a little bit slower. Let's take a look at this though. Uh, the Let me see what the goals are. Legends and live series. Okay. So view and edit roster, legends and live series. So pretty simple. Legends and we got live series when it auto generates my team. The only live series players on here are Mookie Betts and Fernando Tuzzi Jr. And I'm definitely going to put Corey Seager in here because he has just uh, been great for me. So, yes, you have to win the championship. You can play the games on rookie if you want. So, that's going to be pretty easy. It's a free card, basically. Can't look at the card through here. So, what we got to do is, if you want to look at this card uh, and you can't find it, go to Collect, go to My Inventory, My MLB Players, hit R2 or the right bumper if you're on Xbox, and then we'll hit the right trigger or R1 to move ourselves over to the Guardians. And uh, he's not in here. Okay. So once he, once the game generates him, populates him, he'll be in here. Maybe someone already posted on social media his attributes and whatnot. Multiplayer modes, rank seasons. We got new missions. The reason they didn't drop these missions right away is so that DeGrom's price, DeGrom's value and Mike Cameron's value wouldn't drop right away when people got the, um, the program done. So if you notice before today, the... 100 XP in the World Series program was not attainable until they dropped these new missions. So if you added up the XP for the previous missions, even if you played all of the innings played required and got all of the stat missions done, you still would not have gotten to World Series. You would have only gotten to 75 Alejandro Kirk, and then they dropped these missions. So now you can get up to, I believe you can get 150 just by playing uh, enough ranked seasons. And, uh, oh, Dude, I forgot to go over Cody Bellinger, the program. <sighs> the show classics. This pack. I was, everyone was respectively furious that they didn't give us a way to get one of these packs. And um, now we have a chance to get at least a free pack by playing this program and having at least a shot of getting one of those cards without having to pay for them. Because everyone likes this Castellanos. I think everyone likes Edward Cabrera. Uh, Taylor Trammell, I'm not sure about. Mike Soroka is pretty decent too. And then you got these three guys. Logan Webb's not a bad option. I like him. Glaber Torres along the way for free. 95 contact, 96 contact. Good pop. This card's awesome. This is a great free card. And this is a great content drop. I think get this alone is like is like miles ahead of what they were doing the first couple of weeks, kind of dragging us along. Uh, this drop's great because you get this card for free by just playing this program. Nick Lodolo, 89 velo, 90 break. Uh, everything else looks okay. Four pitches. I mean, for free, these, these cards are pretty decent. I think I'm still looking for a good catcher. You know, Joe Maurer's time is up. Doesn't have enough pop. Kind of a noodle back from the left side. Um, and then Cody, I was expecting more contact. 1985 is a little low. And then the outfield is the secondary positions. I'm wondering how well he plays the outfield in the secondary. Tremendously easy to use. Um, if you guys remember playing last year, the lightning card he got for July, I think everyone was hitting over like 400 with him, no matter what type of player you were. There's a lot to actually want to play for right now. I think given this drop, this is the first drop where I know, at least I speak it for myself and probably a few others saying that I actually saw this and wanted to hop on the game right away to start attacking these and get these cards because, uh, you know, you don't want to miss your chance to get them. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what type of videos you want to see. I will get back to that March to October with the A's. I've just been really busy with making cards and my full-time job and, you know, real life, it's getting nice out. I just want to be outside and stuff. But like I said, let me know what you want to see and I will see you guys on the next one.